What I'm about to show you is incredibly important. I've worked for and consulted for companies of varying sizes, very early stage startups, Fortune 100 companies, and there's this critical mistake that companies make, and that is that they focus on the wrong thing. When you're a very, very small business, what you need to focus on is generating sales. And to do that in the earliest, early stages requires a lot of random experimentation to kind of see what grabs. Now, the mistake that midsize and large companies make is they get stuck on this idea that everything needs to be direct response demand generation types of marketing where they're constantly gating things. If it's not lead generation, it has no value. These are the assumptions they have that are incorrect. So what needs to happen is your marketing should focus on different things depending on what stage you're at or depending on how much funding you have. So if you're a very early stage company, but you have a lot of funding, then you can afford to invest in the types of things that a large company would. So one of the biggest mistakes I see is that large business to business companies are not investing enough in their brand and small companies are investing too much in things like content marketing and brand marketing. So let's walk through what's most important. So in the short term, which is where your focus is when you're a small company and where part of uh, where you're investing when you're a larger company, but isn't the focus is going to be your income statement. So Income statement, it's all about revenue and expenses. Are you getting those short-term sales? That's where your focus needs to be when you're starting out. So what does that mean? That means a focus on demand generation, lead generation, account-based marketing, paying people to have sales conversations. Marketing at this stage is basically a way of supporting the sales team, supporting the sales pipeline, or doing experiments to see what will help generate sales. So in the short term, you also have a very high risk tolerance. You have nothing to lose because you have no brand. Nobody knows who you are. If you screw up, nobody cares. They're not going to remember. You're not even on the radar. So that means that you can take high risks. You can experiment. You can do things that large companies cannot because they have to be conservative. They have to protect themselves legally. Uh, they can't, they have to play by the rules essentially. So what does this also mean? It also means that your focus is generally going to be on in-market people. So people that are actively looking for a solution, people that are going to make a purchase in the next few months, not people that are going to make a purchase in five years and two years, in uh, one and a half years. Your primary KPI is return on investment. Contrary to popular belief in the business to business space, your KPI in large companies is not always going to be ROI. But in the short term, which is where your priority is when you're small, it is about return on investment. If something doesn't have an immediate return on investment or a near immediate return on investment, then it's probably not worth doing unless you have a lot of funding because you are in survival mode. You need to make sure that you have enough cash to support the business this quarter. You're not really concerned about what happens next year. You don't even know if you're going to be here next year. So. If we think about the type of marketing leader or the, the mindset of this person who, who's operating uh, on a short term basis, it's going to be a VP of demand generation. Now, in the long term, which is really what you're focused on when you're a large business or a mid sized business, you're not so concerned with short term revenue. You're more concerned with the balance sheet. Now, the way I like to think about this is how value investors like Warren Buffett think about businesses. What's the first thing they think of to determine the value of a business? It's the balance sheet. It's the assets. It's the book value of the business. The core value of the business is not the revenue. It is the assets that generate the revenue, the assets that are on the balance sheet. So in from a marketing perspective, you're thinking about the balance sheet. What are the assets that we own? What is the brand equity? What are the things that we can invest in that are going to produce sales over the long term. So this is this is a fundamental shift in mindset that a lot of business to business companies do not make. They don't make this shift from we're worried about sales to we're worried about the assets that are going to generate sales. Too much focus on demand generation, not enough focus on things like brand building, brand awareness and equity. 
So what happens in the long term is your 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 shift changes towards asset management. You are now a portfolio manager. So your assets are going to be things like your brands, your brand equity, community building, content, your content marketing engine. Less important in the short term because the results don't manifest until maybe a year later. That's when you become ROI positive. But when you're thinking long term, it's worth investing in those assets early. It's about things like, do we own an annual event? Do we own an annual survey report that helps build the brand, build the credibility, build the audience? And once you have the audience, that's like an ownable asset that you can manage. When you have a customer base, that is like an ownable asset you can manage. You are in the asset management balance sheet game now, less so in the early stages. Now, as you get larger, you have a lower risk tolerance. You need to be more conservative. You need to be slower. You need to pass things by the legal department. You need to be more careful in what you do because you could get sued because you have a brand reputation that you can lose. Now, your mindset is also thinking about people that are out of market. So people that are not necessarily going to buy in the next two months, people that might, may not make a purchase until next year. You're also thinking about people that uh, perhaps are not in your target customer group right now, but are going to get a promotion next year or in two years, and they're going to be the ones making the decision. So the directors of today are the VPs of tomorrow, and you need to cater appeal to them. So your mindset in terms of KPIs is, uh, I'm not saying you're not focused at all on return on investment, but that's not the only thing. You're thinking more about equity. You're thinking about brand equity, you're thinking about the equity in the business, you're thinking about long-term sustainability. Now, in the long term, it's not just about demand generation now, it's about having a chief marketing officer or a chief marketing officer mindset, where you're thinking about brand, you're thinking about product marketing management, you're also thinking about demand generation, but uh, you're not just purely focused on this short-term revenue generation. Now, where I think a lot of the magic happens is actually in between these two stages. So there's the short term, there's the long term, uh, but the midterm, this is one of my favorite spaces to play in. So here you're thinking about things like long term contracts with uh, big whales, big sales opportunities. You're thinking about long term partnerships with influencers, other companies in the same industry, maybe uh, software that supports your product, maybe uh, something that integrates with your product, maybe it, it, it's a lubricant that works with your machinery, maybe it's laser equipment uh, that you can latch on to and form uh, partners with the manufacturers of. You're thinking about investments that uh, perhaps are going to generate a midterm uh, return on investment, not a short term, not a long term, but uh, midterm results. You're also thinking about investing in the kinds of content and influencer partnerships that could generate virality, economies of scale. So you're starting to plant the seeds of economies of scale so that you are able to realize them in the long term. So we have the short term, we have the long term, we have the midterm, and lastly, there is the far future. And this is for companies that expect to be around for a long time or have been around for the long time. This is where you're positioning yourself as a true thought leader in the frontiers of where your industry is going, where your customers industries are going, you're really striving to be uh, at the top of your game. Here you're thinking about um, R&D, you're thinking about shooting for the moon, things that could have colossal disruptive uh, opportunities for your business, for the industry. Uh, maybe they won't, maybe uh, they are very high risk or but the rewards could be huge. You're thinking about emerging technology and markets. You're thinking about things that uh, are very much on the creative, innovative side of things, not just about sort of the short, ter short term, can I generate an immediate return on investment? So this is the way I want you to think of marketing. And I want you to think about the shift where in the beginning, the majority of your energy, the majority of your budget is being spent on short term demand, demand generation. In the long term, you're shifting more towards perhaps half of your energy being focused on asset management. I also want you to, in the early stages, start planning some small investments in things that are focused on these midterm opportunities. And then as you get larger, you need to be thinking about, uh, are we investing in the kinds of research and opportunities that could have a huge impact on our bottom line in the long run?